I'm here with Ralph, CEO of CHA USA at uh, Interzoo 2014. He's going to tell us about some of his new pumps here. First, we're going to talk about the Voyager. Um, what's different about the Voyager that's all a lot of people don't realize is it's the quietest stream pump in the market. Absolutely. It, it was designed to be that way, and we do it. We do it by using actually in two ways, depending on the version we're looking at. First off, it uses a standard impeller. Yeah, and a so Vortec, this is what we have a patent on, is the, the Vortec type installation within a stream pump. The uh, other thing we did on the stream pump that's different is the outlet patterns. The outlet pattern on this is different than any other. We challenge customers always, you know, put it in the tank, leave it wide open, feed in the stream of it, or use bubbles, and you can see this. The, the, the streams actually intermingle in a spiral, and what we found when we initially developed this was corals responded well to it, so that's why we came out with it. Uh, other thing, the unit was designed always to be on the back of the tank. Everything in the market was like this. And as you can see, like this, we're, we're kind of big. Yep. But the use, it was really designed to be a profile like that or a profile like this. And, and, what, and what you can do with the dial, it doesn't restrict the flow like everyone thinks. That can actually spread the flow in that cone up to two feet wide. So as you turn the dial, you could have a coral right there not blow a frag off a of position. You can send the current actually all the way around it, very close to it. And that, it's the range of motion and it's quiet operation. That's what the Voyager is known for. One of the things that I thought was really unique was the uh, impeller design, which can start in either direction. Correct. So really an ideal option for a, a wave maker function. I imagine this will last a lot longer than most. Well, that's uh, exactly right. It's well, every, every company, you essentially, if you have alternating current, the impellers can go in either direction, so they have to build clutches into them, whether they put something in the rear or a bumper on the front. And every time that hits, you take wear to the rotor, you take wear to the pump. The reason we're able to offer a longer warranty than most is because our pump, it doesn't matter which direction it goes. On the big units, same thing. I don't have a clutch, but what we do on this, and the reason the body's a little bigger, is electronics. It'll, change the current pattern, send it in the correct direction every single time. So even this one, even though it's using a propeller uh, rather than an impeller, yes. will always start in the same direction without a clutch? That's correct. Also always. good for a wave maker then? Absolutely. See, everybody loves wave makers, you know, and it works uh, on their favorite controller, you know, be it uh, in uh, Apex or whatnot. And so this is pretty, uh, pretty big deal that I think is overlooked. It's overlooked in the, in the flow of this. One thing that we do at CHA is we really state flows very conservatively. And that's one of the things we hear at this show is, gosh, you say that pump is X flow, and when I put it on my tank, it was a lot more. And it's, it's just, that's powerful. our tradition is to be careful with always, we understate flows on purpose. You can uh, even just tell from the size of the props on these versus some of your competitors. Mm -hmm. uh, but we definitely, when you feel it, it's, it's much more powerful. So I noticed you got some new ones coming out. Yes, well, the, the new Extreme Series, which obviously won't have the Voyager name, um, they're going to be more of, what we, our goal here was to have more of a, I guess, a traditional prop pump in some ways, but to get the size down. We wanted to have the smallest pumps all the way up to 2,100 gallons per hour in that body. And that's what we do, we're doing with all the latest pumps. These will be LA, out late in the year, and we'll have everything up to 2,100 gallons per hour in that body. That's tiny. This right here is 1600. This is just, if you, and I know your customers know about the Voyager Nano, it's just, uh, is it half of a centimeter larger than the Nano, but all the way up to 2100 GPH. We use, this does use traditional bumper, but we actually have a way in the material that's made here so we could silence it significantly over traditional, the noise you traditionally hear. Still won't ever be as silent as this, but more flow in a smaller space. Yeah, this has got to be uh, amongst the smallest uh, uh, pumps in that flow range available. Yeah, that we, by our measurements as of right now, the answer is yes to that. Excellent. <laughs> well, that's a big deal because nobody wants to see this stuff inside their tank, right. uh, and uh, I think you'll get some success with that. Can you tell us a little bit about these synchros? Uh, yes, but first, I, oh, I, we, the other thing, this will also be available in one version that is DC. DC as it, well, it, really. You'll have a DC version of this that has variable speed. We'll show it later on, but it, it has um, four different preset settings, and then it ramps up from 100 gallons per hour to 2,200 gallons per hour and does all the surging and 
preset controls that people are accustomed to. Is it also going to work with um, uh, aquarium controllers like the Apex? Yes, and it will be Apex controlled. That will so, be a big hit. And then we'll, after that, we will come out with our own controller that runs four of them. So oh, that'll be, the, that'll be, I guess, the phase really in January timeline. All right. Well, something to look forward to. And the Synchros? Synchro. I mean, everybody knows us for Synchro. We're it's one of the oldest Italian pump manufacturers. The Synchro is our our latest generation of pumps, which is I guess seven or eight generations old. Um, we like to show off, and that's what the whole exhibit's about. If you can see that, it's a, this is a Synchro 3.0. Uh, 3.0 is running all of that water there. Yeah. What is again, that, like that's a, a 10 feet ahead too? It's, it's, again, it's, we, we, we understate everything, so that, that's the point of it. I, um, I know using these uh, versus some of the competitor pumps that are out there, these are absolutely like half the, the sound volume, or decibels rather, and uh, they also run cooler. Really, a, we typically on average, we're about 30% cooler and quieter than what's out there. What we want to do on a, on a sinker pump or any pump we make, especially for the European market, now this is very important in the U.S., is over the warranty cycle of the pump, we, we want to say the pump pays for itself. So our pump may sit on the shelf or, or be sold for $50 more than XYZ company, but in one year, in a lot of circumstances, we'll save somebody $80. So over a three-year warranty period, customer saving $240, so we quickly more than paid for the price of the pump. Uh, if you say 30% quieter, I've plugged all these things in before, and uh, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. Uh, <laughs> your biggest competitor that. is loud. Man. <laughs> so, uh, in my house, uh, I can't. I don't want to hear this thing in my bedroom, I don't want to hear it in my living room, and the pumps are often the loudest thing there is, so this is a big deal for me. It's definitely worth the money. So is there anything else you'd like to show us here? Um, if we want to walk over, I'd like to show the, the HF, which is our, our big pump. Let's do it. So this is the new HF controllable submersible pump? Yes, we, we pressure our engineers. We're always, they're always asking me, you know, why DC, why DC? We don't need DC. I said, they'll show us why we don't need it. And that's what this is. The, the HF, which is available from 2,400 gallons per hour to 4,200 gallons per hour, this is our mock-up of what will be a controllable version. Out of the box, you can raise the flow up and down, and then it'll also have variable flow patterns. So um, we get calls a lot where big custom type installations where they don't even want to have a Voyager in a tank. So they've got one recirculating pump, and then they're drilling the tank, and they're putting two ports on the back, and they still want the movement of water. They can just port water in and out, and this will be available so you can raise it up or down, or it will have variable flow patterns. So just on its own, it'll change how high, how low it goes. So more or less, uh, you're gonna, you could use these as closed loop. And, correct, uh, correct. That's excellent. So do you know how they're doing it with the, the AC power? I do. Uh, the, um, the key to our pumps, and we mentioned it on the Voyager um, HP, we actually have a, a computer chip in our pumps. So we can regulate the flow through that computer chip, and that's what forces in the right direction. On the HF, it's a high flow pump, and we're, again, we're trying to be energy efficient, and that pump brain, if you will, is what makes it more energy efficient. Well, we're able to lock into that and control it as far as speed. And beyond talking to the engineers to get exactly specific, which I may not want to do, <laughs> that's how we do it. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. All right, thank you for all your thank time. You. I really appreciate it. it. I look forward to seeing those new pumps come out. Thank you.